Hey guys, another Ask Adam for you today. And today's question comes in about a master's competitor in yearly muscle gain. Another one from a fitness channel online where there's a lot of great discussions had here. Now, this question comes in. It says, I'm a 5'4 master's competitor, almost 40. I've been competing since 2019, but been lifting for 15 plus years. Maybe not perfectly for 15 years, but very consistent. And for bikini for at least five years. I compete in a natural organization in Canada. I'm natural and have average genetics, but I do not gain muscle easily. I estimate my maintenance calories around 1,800 calories, maybe a bit more. I'm heading into my off season after my June show, and my coach wants me to around 2,600 calories after a while. I feel it may be a bit too much as I probably mostly gain fat and I don't gain much muscle given my age and workout age. Like if I gained three pounds in a year, it would be great. I would like to stay leaner this off season as I feel it would make my next prep easier as well. I also feel like I maxed out what is naturally possible for me or pretty much. So all those calories won't benefit me that much. Am I wrong to think so? What's your experience and opinion on this? So first off, I will say thank you for watching our videos. If you're using the term workout age, I made that up. <laughs> so I really enjoy you. I appreciate it. And I wanted to answer this question specifically because I saw that in there. Now, with that being said, you are dead right. Okay. You are actually right. Now, it sounds like your coach is giving you a little bit of a bulk, a little bit of a bro bulk and not really taking in everything into account. Now, here's the thing. First off, with you being close to 40 years old, I'm 41 years old. And when I was 30, I tested my labs, um, about 29, 30. And I found out even at that age, I had lower testosterone, right? So if you're over 30, and honestly, everyone should just test their labs. I've seen 23-year-olds with almost no testosterone before. It's going to make your bodybuilding really hard. You know, if you're having, um, and even at your age, you might even want to test your IGF-1 and test your, your growth hormone values, right? Test where your, see where your estrogen's at, see where your thyroid's at, see where everything's at. Um, so I would start with that too. You know, if you feel like you're not gaining that much muscle, you feel like you've naturally maxed out your genetic potential, um, you know, look at your hormones and make sure that they line up because especially for a natural competitor, you're going to want to make sure those things are absolutely perfect. And there's ways of getting those things up naturally without taking any TRT. And it's good to at least know the problem. You can help get those things up through foods, through different different options. You know, I'm not dieting so hard for so long, fats, things like that. You know, you might want to look at your diet and see, hey, you know what? My testosterone is a little bit low. My T3, T4 is a little low. Maybe I'm dieting for too hard for too long, whatever. You could start seeing these things and see if maybe you've maxed out your natural potential with how your hormones are set now, but maybe in a little while, um, when you get your hormones fixed, you're, you will now reach a new wall of your maximum natural potential, right? So that being said, what is someone who's been working out for 15 years, five consistently with bikini, who's 40 years old, how much can they build? So first off, I will say this, whether you're 40 years old or 20 years old, there's no difference on how much muscle you can gain, okay? So there's no physiological reason why you being older will limit your muscle growth, okay? And you can look at this as you look at some bodybuilders. You look at um, some, some bodybuilders have actually won Mr. Olympia in their mid-40s, you know? So it's if that was the case and it was harder for them to build muscle, it would be harder for them to keep muscle, and I would be unlikely they'd be the number one bodybuilder in the world in that scenario, because it just wouldn't be possible. If you're fighting for muscle while 25-year-olds were just growing into the show, it would be won by a 25, 30-year-old every single time, right? So that is, there's no physiological reason why you're going to have a harder time building muscle. Why does that myth exist? Well, that myth exists because, honestly, you're not one of them, but people are lazy, and they say, oh, when I, was, when I hit 40, I just had no more muscle, and it was just really hard for me to lose weight. Well, no, it's hard for you to lose weight because you're 40, because you sit on your ass all day long and you don't go to the gym. I'm 40. I've been part of this. I work mostly a desk job now. It's a lot harder for me because now I'm sitting on my ass more than I used to when I was personal training 12 sessions a day. So yeah, it's harder for me to stay leaner than it was before, but it's not because I'm getting older. It's because I'm sitting more and I'm moving less, right? Now, uh, luckily I've countered that by doing more cardio with doing sports and stuff, and you have to find a way to do that too, but it's not a valid um, science-based reason, right? There's no physiological difference between the two. When you, when you get older, you move less. You have more responsibilities. That's generally the way, way it goes. When you're younger, you're out walking around more. You're having more fun. You're going to the pools. You're doing more sports. You're playing high school sports still, like, and you're still playing with your friends here and there with sports. Like, so you're just more active. You know, maybe you're still working out and you cared more. But there's no physiological difference. So let's get that excuse out of the out of the window. 
if I'm getting fat, it's because I'm being lazy and I need to take responsibility for that. It's not because of my age. So now that being said, how much muscle can you gain now? It's not going to be a lot yet. Yeah, you're probably about right. If you have a good year, it's probably going to be somewhere in that three pound range after you've gone through that initial growth. That first year of lifting, those newbie gains you get, someone your build, which is five, four, um, assumingly pretty little because of your, your calorie intake at 1800 being close to looks like what your maintenance calories are. Um, you're probably going to be gaining your first year, maybe 10 pounds, eight pounds of lean mass on someone that big. Honestly, that's probably overshooting. It's probably closer to six to eight for your first year. After that, it's probably somewhere in that four to six range. And after that, it's probably going to be somewhere in that three to five. And as where you're at now, years and years in as a natural competitor, um, you're probably in that two to two on a, maybe a good year, maybe four pounds on a year. So it's not going to be a lot of actual muscle. So when we look at, when we look at weight, let's say we're shooting for two pounds and that's probably more realistic for almost everyone out there. Five years plus that your build is probably going to be closer to two pounds. Let's say we're shooting for two, right? How many calories is in two pounds of muscle? We look at it. We're like, Oh, 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. So 3,500 calories in a pound of muscle wrong. There's not 3,500 calories in a pound of muscle significantly less. Okay. In two pounds of muscle, I think it's 1600 calories and two pounds of muscle total, right? So we talk about accumulated stored skeletal tissue, right? It's very little calories. So how many calories do you actually need to gain those two pounds of muscle throughout the year? It is very, very few. If we want to break it down, let's break it down over this. Now this is, it's not going to work this way, but this is how many you would actually need based on that math. These numbers are rough off the top of my head, but they're very close to accurate, if not dead on. So uh, we're going to do this math here. If you did two pounds a year and you were to gain 1,600 calories, right, you went, to your, you went to perfect maintenance calories and then you overshot to gain being a slight surplus to gain just skeletal tissue, guess how many calories you would need? Take a guess before I answer. Okay, you got your number. 4.38 per day. 4.38 calories per day is what you would need to gain that two pounds that you're capable of gaining, right? And let's say you wanted to gain, you're going to gain four because that's probably the limit. Okay nine calories right per day so do you need to shoot in a calorie surplus from 1800 to 2600 and how many of those calories are actually going to be stored as fat or contributed to muscle very few okay you're in an 800 calorie surplus when you're talking about being at 1800 calorie being your maintenance let's do the math on that you're overshooting your calories by 33 percent on where you would need to be you do not need to be in a 33 percent calorie surplus if that is your maintenance guys now so you're like okay the next question comes up okay adam i want to do it perfectly exactly as you said it how do i do a nine calorie surplus <laughs> that's an easier said than done question right you are going to have to probably overshoot to hit those calories it's going to be highly unlikely you're going to be able to nail your calories that closely, even in your calorie reporting is going to be off by more than nine calories, right? So yeah, you're not going to be able to do perfect calorie m calories because some days you're going to walk a little more. Some days you're going to work legs. Some days you're going to work arms. It burns more calories for legs than arms. Some days you're going to just move a little bit more because your family's in town. Some days you're going to sit a little bit more. So it's like impossible to really nail the calories per day and then go, okay, above that 10, right? So that's going to be a hard thing to do. So what kind of surplus do you actually need and what type of weight gain do you actually need per week to kind of monitor this? Well, if we're trying to gain, you know, four pounds of lean mass per year, it's okay to gain a little body fat. Let's not be crazy. And, and I'm not that, I'm not that crazy with this. Everyone kind of labels me as that crazy with body fat in the off season where I'm like, no body fat gain, stay stage lean. I am not that crazy when it comes to this. I think staying about 10%, 12% above stage weight, if you have a long off season is totally a realistic amount. You're going to gain some body fat when you're getting some lean mass. So how do you monitor it? Well, you got to keep checking in. You got to keep checking in with your coach. You have to have a realistic discussion about how much muscle you can actually gain and how much we're really shooting for on a weekly basis. You can't see your measurements just constantly going up on your waist and hips every single week, like a dramatic amount. Like if you're trying to gain, let's say an inch a month on your waist and hips and you're five years in, like unlikely that that's going to be muscle if it's all an inch on the hips. You're not gaining an inch of glutes as a natural competitor every month, five years in, even as an enhanced competitor, you're not going to gain an inch a month every month, right? So it's just, it's a slow process and we have to be, uh, pay attention to that. And now here's the thing. Let's say you overshoot it and you do a 33% calorie surplus and you gain, you're like, Hey, I still did it. I'm going to trust my coach. I gained whatever, 20 pounds. Well, you still only gained, let's say you maxed it out and you gained four pounds of lean mass. Let's say doing my way, you only gained 
two to three pounds of lean mass. Doing your way, you gained four to five pounds of lean mass, right? But doing my way, you only have to diet off five pounds. Doing your way, you have to diet off 15 pounds, right? Maybe 20. Okay, so what we're worried about is not just your muscle gain. We're worried about how much muscle you keep, your net muscle gain. Not just your gain, your net muscle gain. You have to lose those 20 pounds. You're going to lose some of that newly gained muscle, right? So at the end, you're going to net the same amount of muscle that you would doing it my way versus doing a huge calorie surplus because to lose 20 pounds, you're going to need to lose probably one to two pounds of that skeletal, skeletal tissue, right? That new muscle. So you end up with the same amount. You, the only difference is you got to eat more food. You had more fun because you ate more food. Um, and then you dieted down and you had the same net amount of muscle because there's no give without a take in any part of this sport. Now, the only major difference, the only disadvantage you have is one, you're not feeling so great when you're up 20 pounds walking around the pools. You should, you've, earned, you've earned your fitness. You should look good more than once a year. Now, on top of that, your skin is not going to just always bounce back. I like, think that people think, oh, I'm going to gain 20 pounds. I'm going to gain 25 pounds. And my skin's just going to be like that. It's like elastic. It's not like that. Every time you stretch it, it's going to be more stretched. Every time you get a little bit fatter, it's going to get a little more softer and more stretched. It's not this <clears throat> rubber band that just takes, comes right back to its original shape. Your skin texture in this sport is a big part of it. I've talked about skin texture a lot. Yeah, people are like, oh, that, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, you can have this, you can have that. No, if you're trying to climb the ranks, everything matters. You know, if you have, if you're growing up and you're gaining, you know, you're getting a lot of stretch marks and whatnot too, every time you gain weight, it does matter. You know, people will lie to you and say, oh, that stuff doesn't matter. It, no, it does matter. Everything matters. Pimples matter, right? Hair matters. Makeup matters. You think that skin texture doesn't matter? You think if your skin's a little bit looser than someone else's, they're not going to look at that at some point? There is, that is going to be part of the criteria at a certain point. So if someone has zero stretch mark, perfectly tight skin wrapped skin versus someone who's in the same shape and they're exactly the same shape, you can't decide between the two, but the other one has stretch marks, pimples and looser skin. Who do you think is going to win? They might not tell you who's going to win, but that is a factor. This whole thing is a total package thing. Beauty flow is part of the judged criteria, right? So for your long run, I will say skin texture matters. I will say stay leaner. It makes more sense. And honestly, it's easier on the mind, even though it's a lot harder on the mind in terms of what you get to eat all year, because it's a lot more fun, I'll agree, to eat brownies and donuts and gain that 20 pounds in the off season than it is to keep it tight all year. But I will say this, the counter to that is it's a lot better feeling to be able to be comfortable in your clothes all year, be able to just like jump in and go to a pool and be like, you want to go to a pool party? Like, okay. Versus having to say, oh, well, I'm in my off season. You know, I don't really feel comfortable. If a photo shoot comes up, you're in shape, you know, if you're doing this sport, you know, and you're doing it because you want to grow in the industry, opportunities are going to come up and you can't really, you can't really have to get in shape for them. You know, there, a lot of times these sponsorship opportunities like, Hey, we're shooting in two weeks. We're going to be in Vegas and uh, we'd love to be able to shoot. Like you don't, you want to be in that position where you're like, okay, cool. I'll be ready. I'm going to diet for a week, two weeks and like lose two pounds and be totally ready for it. Right. That's how this sport, it works as a advertising vehicle for yourself. And you should be in shape more than one time a year, you know? So anyway, that is my take on it. Those are the facts behind it. I know that's an inconvenient truth for some of you, but that is the reality. Hopefully you learned a thing or two from this. If you want to try my way, come out, teameelitephysique.com for worldwide online contest prep. We prep the best here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you later.